Hello, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench. Welcome back. This is part four now of Will the Border Models Nose Art? This one here, this kit here. Will this nose art, will the interior of this nose art, fit into a Hong Kong model's fuselage? Now, I asked the question and Annie very, very kindly went and bought me this kit, sent it to me. So I have got the Hong Kong model's um, front half of the fuselage, or front section of the fuselage here. Here's one that's complete and not been cut. And I've got the border model one here. So you can see the big difference straight away. You've got the textured finish. If you want to know all the differences, go back and look at the other videos. There's another three um, in this series where we look at it, measure it and everything, and then we start doing some cutting. So the reason I'm doing it is because I want to put the far superior border model interior into a Hong Kong models kit. You may be asking the question, why don't you just fit the nose onto the Hong Kong models fuselage? And it has been done. Um, I'm sorry I forget your name now because I'm terrible with names, but it has been done. I, I showed you some pictures, a guy sent me some pictures of his um, kit and he's actually glued the whole nose onto a Hong Kong models uh, fuselage. The reason I'm not doing that is one, we've got the textured skin, we've got the raised rivets. There is a slight difference in the contour here. There's also a slight difference in the contour here, not that that matters. Um, but uh, I want to keep the Hong Kong model's fuselage part here so everything matches um, all around the wing and everything as well. Um, but I, what I do want to do is replace the nose section, this part here, because the interior detail in here is, is again, far superior. And when we actually look at the two sections together, we can see the difference in profile the border model is much sharper on the nose and the Hong Kong model is much rounder. So we've got a difference in shape there. And the detail in the border model turret is much nicer than in the Hong Kong model. Now, don't think for one minute I'm slagging off the Hong Kong model kit. Um, the border model kit in detail is far superior than the Hong Kong model. There is absolutely no doubt about that, no dispute whatsoever. Um, it has all this lovely raised rivet in and textured skin and everything. However, that is a pain in the ass when you come to do the rear fuselage. Uh, more on that on another video, which I'm working on um, with the rivets and everything. But basically, the, the Hong Kong model kit for a model to build is a much more pleasurable experience than the border model. If you like, I've said this before, if you like building Tamiya kits and you don't want to have to deal with seam lines and sink marks and ejector pin marks and all that sort of stuff, if you just like to basically put a model together, then the Hong Kong model is your one. Um, but if you do enjoy all the detail and everything, then go for the border model. There is the massive price difference, unfortunately, um, but, you know, that's, that's the way it is. Um, I personally think the border model Lancaster, which is actually a wing nut wings kit, I personally think, in my opinion, it is probably the best kit ever made. Um, it is just amazing. And, you know, it, it's up there with your Tamiya 132nd Corsairs and Mustangs and Spitfires. It really is absolutely gorgeous. But as I say, it's not an easy model to build. And if you're not a scale modeler and you're not very skilled and, you you know, you want to build a Lancaster, go and have a look at my Hachette build series. I can thoroughly recommend that as a part work. It's bloody lovely. The detail inside is lovely. So um, there we go. Anyway, so where do we get to in part three? We removed the nose and we were talking about cutting the nose off of the border models kit. And I was talking about coming back six millimeters because I wanted to, um, you know, keep this contour here. Um, the problem with that is I'm going to have a scene here to deal with, which is right in the middle of all the surface detail. If I cut it here where I've cut this one off on this panel line, that's actually a natural break. If you're watching Jess Jane, you'll see they've just actually replaced the nose and that's where it breaks. Um, and there is rib tape over there. Um, sorry, not rib tape, um, cloth tape, linen tape, which is covered in resin. You can see it is replicated on the border model kit there. So we can cover it up with that. With So it's, it's going to be an easy fix if we do make a mistake. So I've decided to go down that road. Another reason for it is there is a slight difference. When you look at the border model compared to the Hong Kong model, there is a slight difference in the width of this stiffener plate here. So, so there's another reason we'd have a, a step to deal with there, which would have to be made to look perfect because it's smack bang in the middle, right in the middle of the nose. So I'm going to do the same down here. I'm, I'm going to keep this edge here. So I've cut this off of here. I'm going to do the same with this one. So we'll keep that edge there so the bulkhead will still fit. There is a slight difference in the contour here um, of the Hong Kong models on the border model. It's you, you can see 
the Hong Kong model is more sort of straight and then a radius whereas the border model is more of a, a constant radius a lot of people have asked me can they fit the iconic air dam buster conversion to the border model kit um, the answer is yes you just have to do some sanding around the front fairing area but again if you haven't seen it go and have a look I've just done a review of the fish cop um, dam buster conversion for the border models Lancaster and boy oh boy is it nice it is stunning so uh, there you go so um, right let's get on with what we're going to do I'm going to cut it on that seam for reasons I've just explained and what makes life very easy is if you look here We've got this raised area in here and where we fit the the internal nose in there up to that step so we've got this step here so we can cut to there and then we've got this line here so we can cut down to there so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come back a couple of mil and then what we can do is sand it so we get all this out of the way so what we can do is cut down here so i need to get a rule some description let's find a tatty rule that i can bend there we go they're really handy these aluminium rules so we'll go this way and what i'm going to do is just what we'll do i think is scribe along the back of here okay and what i'm doing is scribing just to make a line for the saw to pick up on and what we'll do is come straight back there and we'll, we'll come along the front of there it doesn't really matter what this line is like it's just a it's just a line to and then what we'll do is we'll sand that back to fit so i'm going to take my ask saw and literally just cut through it'd be much easier from the outside wouldn't it it would be much easier to do this from the outside but i'm worried that i'm going to slip that's the problem if i slip Having said that, we've got to sand away all that lovely detail anyway, haven't we? Because it wouldn't match the Hong Kong models kit. But, uh, let's just let's just cut this off. Today, by the way, is Good Friday, so happy Easter to everyone. I think we might go through this with a scriber actually, rather than try and use a saw. We'll just keep scribing it. As I say, it doesn't matter how tatty. I've just broken my scriber. Look at that. That's worth remembering. <laughs> That was the um, MRP Mr. Scriber Narrow. I just came off the end of there and snapped it off. Great. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our trusty, reliable, tough, brilliant Tamiya Scriber. These things, are, it's made of steel. It's not, um, it's not hardened or anything. There we go. We've gone through now. That's brilliant. You can see we've got marks there. So what we should be able to do now is saw through from the outside. So I need to be careful not to damage that edge there. This border bottles plastic is an absolute dream to work with. This is crazy and I'm sat here cutting up a 130 pound model nose. So, as I say, very generous of Annie. Hope you're watching, Annie. Hope you're feeling better. Um, seems to be that everybody is getting ill, seriously ill, like cancer and all sorts. It's just, it's just ridiculous the amount of um, health issues that are going on out there. It's crazy. Poor old Lindsay. Um, Annie and heard nothing from Wendy for a long long time quite worried about her so what we've got now is just we've got that roughly cut out that there now is a piece of scrap so unfortunately we've destroyed it um, so we're going to sand this back until we're just level with that raised area there And this down here we're going to sand back what I need to do is make a line there to work to okay I don't want to sand off that edge there so we need to be careful of that in fact what I'll do I will grab some masking tape 
and then we'll put a couple of layers of masking tape over that edge so that we don't keep knocking into it because that's going to be the edge of our Bombay. We don't want to mess that up, do we? I think this will end up being WS, uh, WSY, which was the Torboy Lancaster. I think what I'm going to do is grab a knife and cut this away here. This plastic is just a dream to work with. It's very much like ICM plastic which is also absolutely awesome. There we go. That's pretty much back to where we want to be. So we've got that nice corner there now. So that is actually going to butt into there like you can see there. That's going to butt up into that corner. So what we can do now is just sand this away roughly. tempted to do now is get a black marker mark that there and then when we get to sanding near it we'll see if we're actually touching it so I'm going to carry on with this sanding I'll, you don't want to watch me do this do you and then I'll come back when it's done and we'll see how it looks and there we go um, front is all done and sanded we've got this internal part here fitted into the fuselage with the nose added and what I do is I pull it back so it aligns, I can align the windows. So that's how, that's how I judge my position. Um, and then this should just drop straight on like that. There we go. So you can see we've got a very neat joint, all nice there. So um, we now need to look at getting it all glued together, which is going to be fun. <laughs> So we've got to somehow get that butt jointed onto there without getting any glue onto those bits. I suppose what we could do, we could fit this. Um, if we end up gluing that in, then we do. Now, the other thing I need to do is check it all with the floor and everything fitted to make sure that it's all good. So I'm going to have to go on and tape all of this lot back together. Um, so that it's all like one solid assembly and then we'll see how it all goes. Okay, so there we go. Right, we can see we have all of this together. One thing I would like to say, I find it absolutely incredible. If you think about, you know, Peter Jackson and his history with aircraft, he's got his own aircraft restoration company. Um, and I know that he's got genuine Lancaster turrets that he's borrowed from, um, from uh, Fantasy of Flight. So, you know, I find it absolutely incredible that him, with all that knowledge and experience and resource, he made this kit, okay, this, this border model that's wing at Wings Lancaster. And then you've got Neil in a little factory in Hong Kong um, with a couple of cab people, and they've designed this model, and it is so, so close. You know, I mean, if you look at how the, the fuselage halves line up here, with all the with all the border model stuff and then when you look at you know the dimensions and how it all fits inside it's just it's really quite stunning um, how it all fits together I find it incredible um, now the way this fits on here I mean I can clip that into that nose and you can hear it doesn't even clip in it just it just sits on there so I was very lucky with that cut um, I may have to sand a bit more off the top there I think but we can see that if, that, if I hold that in position, look how it all lines up. I mean, when you think, it's absolutely amazing how Neil got it so 
Well, it's it's amazing how they both got it, got them so close. So you know, one of them must be perfect, and one of them must be just off, or maybe they're just both just off. I don't know, but the, the way they fit these things fit together is just incredible. You know, look at that. You could you could use this half and not even notice the difference. It's just absolutely stunning. It's absolutely stunning. There is a slight difference in the radius there. You can see that. If I pull this in, it's, you know, we have to pull it about a bit. What we're going to do is we'll make the Hong Kong models suit the border model because basically I want to I want to use the border model uh, windscreen, so it's going to be that same contour. But uh, yeah, it's um, it's incredible how close they are. So what we need to do now is, as I say, we need to work out how on earth we're going to glue this together without these nose pieces inside. So, uh, yeah, and we can also see, and you can see the reason I'm doing it. If you look at the Hong Kong model's nose interior there, and you compare that to the border model's nose interior, we've got vertical ribs to add in there yet. Yeah, that's what those slots are for. So, um, yeah, it's quite, uh, it's quite amazing. And then obviously once this is all on, we need to get this sanded smooth and riveted and everything to suit, to match this one. I'm also going to think I'm going to cut this turtle deck out and use the border model one because it's nicer. But um, here we go. We need to get that glued on now, get it nice and solid before we even think about working on the other side. Because what we don't want to do is go on now and do the other side and have them sort of like this. You know, we need to make sure that this is all fitted up solid and then we can fit it up like this and make the other nose when we cut it off of this one, make that suit that. So uh, I'm going to work out, I'm going to glue this on now. It's going to take a while. All right, so I've put some sellotape on the back of here. I've, I've, it's actually stuck to the inside. And that way the glue, nothing sticks to sellotape except for sellotape. So that way the glue can't actually um, get on the interior parts. So what we can do here now is fit this nose section. And I'm going to put a couple of clothes pegs on here, soft clothes pegs, not so as not to damage any of the lovely detail. We're going to clamp that in there like that, so that's nice and solid now. And then we can push it back. Push it back and make sure it's all butted up. Check these windows here, they're all roughly lined up, so that's all good. Um, we do have a bit of a gap there at the bottom. It looks like I need to actually... Remove some material from that lower corner. You can see we've got a gap here, yet in the lower co corner it's butted up. So what we'll do is we'll take that off and we'll just give it a bit of relief in that lower corner area. And then that will all just clamp back together again, like so top clamped in well, now we've got a gap at the bottom <laughs> so uh, there we go so I'm going to actually just get this glued in now what I want to do is pull this interior back there we are because obviously the position of the interior doesn't matter in relation to the exterior as long as it's the same on both sides Okay, so that's butted up there. Pull that back tight. And as you can see, the nose is all lining up here and everything. That under there is almost lining up, but there is a slight difference in contour, so that's why we've got a bit of a difference there. But what we could do is just get a piece of tape on there just to just to keep them together. Have them all lined up. Right. So we're gonna somehow have to hold that in. I think we have to do is put some drops of super glue in. For an, for an instant tack and then and then weld it afterwards with some I think we'll 
concentrate on the bottom first, get this bottom glued in. And then we can work on the top, because if I pull the top, it pulls the bottom out. And if I put, work on the bottom, it pulls the top out. So I think that's what we'll do. So I think I'm going to grab some super glue. We'll use, uh, what should we use? I think we'll use the black thin for a change. I'll use my black thin, there it is. We'll be able to see where it's gone. So grab a Pringles lid, put a drop of this in here. Don't need much. A little applicator. drop in there, let that capillary in, hold it all nice and flush and let it dry and there we go as you can see it's all tacked up nicely um, with the super glue that's all going good so that's all on nice and solid so what we can do now is Mr Unprepared is grab some extra thin and put some in there now, I should really be protecting all this area with tape, but I'd rather have a drop of extra thin go astray than have extra thin go astray and then capillary under tape. So uh, that's why it's not all protected. So I'm getting this nice and wet, get a lot of hot action going on in there. As I say, it won't stick to the cellar tape, so that's cool. The super glue will tack to the sellotape, but it will be easily broken off. So sellotape is a fantastic barrier, as is parcel tape. I've often used it when I'm doing fiberglass moulds. Because nothing sticks to it, except for parcel tape. <laughs> so there we go, that's that all glued up. So we can just leave that to dry. I actually managed to snap this top part off here because uh, where's the hole? Where's the other? It's on here isn't it? Duh. It's, uh, I've actually had to thin that area out to fit the um, water model fuselage. I didn't want to bent it. It just snapped off. So um, that's okay. It doesn't matter. It's all uh, it's all going to be fairly flimsy in this area anyway until it's all built up and all the interior will support the exterior then. I want to get a nice lot of glue in here. I want to get it properly, properly welded together. Because what I'm going to do next is come along with some sprue goo. So I think what I'll do now is protect it because sprue goo will actually make a right mess. So what we'll do here is just put some tape down like that. Not really too worried about the side because we're going to be sanding it anyway. So I've got my sprue goo here. Now I don't really want to use the brush because it's so big. So then what I'll do is get this little pointy tool and just lay lay some sprue goo in here. Obviously, this is all this, the the border model knows. It's going to be all sanded, so I'm working right at the bottom of the screen, aren't I? The border model nose is going to be all sanded and riveted, so I'm not too worried about messing up the detail on there. And then this actual joint will be covered with um, covered with Mr. Surfacer. Because it is doped linen, as I've said before. There we go. Just and that's another reason for having it really wet with the um, extra thin in there, is it helps this penetrate. There we go. In that bomb here, I may be able to get some backing in there, but the, I'd like to put some plastic card in the back to um, to support the joint. But the worry there is, is then the interior won't fit, and I the um, the Hong Kong model's fuselage is thin to within an inch of its life, so I can't go take it anymore. I suppose I could put some plastic strip in there 
and then take something off of the back of the interior. We shall see. I think I'll leave that area there because um, we want to see the definite step. So there we are. So that is that done. And you can see already that what's happening, the, the sprue goo is capillaring into the gap because of all the extra thin air that's pulling it in. So um, there we are. So we can leave that to dry now for eight weeks. <laughs> now I'll leave that to dry for at least uh, 48 hours. And then I think I'll actually put some sprue goo on there as well just to help support that there because it's, uh, it's very thin in behind there. So there we are, happy with that, all looking good. And uh, so this is how it goes together. It's not how to do it. There's a million different ways to do it. In fact, if I think of it, I'll put the picture up, unless I've put the picture up before of that gentleman that sent me the photograph of his. I think I may have shown you before. Man. So uh, there we are, right. Let's leave that to dry for a while and see what happens. Hey, a bit later now, um, about an hour, a couple of hours, whatever. And got it apart. The, the, this stuff is, is still a bit soft, but I, I wanted to get it apart just to make sure it was going to come apart before everything went solid. So what I'm doing now is just get some extra thin, run it down the inside like this. Just run that down there. And then once again, we're going to get some sprue goo. And just put a small amount of sprue goo in um, just to back up the gap and uh, not give ourselves too much work going forward so because remember I, I would love to put some strips in here but we'll, we'll see what we can do um, I think I can probably do something here because it'll be hidden by the turret and there's nothing I mean what I can do is just you know take away a section here and then put a piece in there just to um, just to give it some support but then saying that as long as it'll hold together while it's being built that'll be fine um, it doesn't need to be, because once it's all assembled, it will support itself. So uh, it may not actually need anything. We shall see. In this little area in here, I'm just going to put some in there because I want that to be strong. The biggest worry is cracking if we start pulling it about and it starts to crack. So there we go. Right. We'll also have to check if the instrument panel is going to fit under this. Hong Kong models cowling because it's so much. Oh no, it's not actually. It's um, it's okay. We're going to be cutting this area here away. So uh, there we go. Right. So that's that all done. Lovely. I'll drop more on the outside there where I um, didn't get it before. There we are. So I think what we'll do now is um, get it all put back together. You can see here where the super glue's been on the tape, it's not affected it at all. So what we're going to do is hook. We're going to get that tape out of the way first. So we've got the, the floor is going to hook into there. Like so. So we can push that down in like that. Make sure the nose interior is all fitted in nicely. I'm going to put a peg on there just to support it. And then we can come along with the other side. And hook that floor in. Make sure it's all aligned. That's all nice. That's all good. Push these fuselage halves together. And having this hook system, there's, there's small legs on the border model floor. I put this piece of plastic strip in so it sort of 
it's hooking in there and it keeps it all together it stops it all from just flying apart we'll put that on there and then we'll tape that together and we can let that dry in that position so there we go so that is order model Hong Kong model order model Hong Kong model so we're also going to have to take some some off the top of there because the um, in fact no we won't because we're going to use the, um, the border model turtle deck aren't we so we're going to see how that works out right so there we go so not much covering this video but I wanted to get something out there so you all know I haven't just left this behind um, but I've got a lot on the play I've got a lot of projects on the go my mojo is absolutely hammered to kingdom come um, but um, I must be honest I've enjoyed doing this I may do a bit of Lego or a bloody jigsaw or something. I don't know. Perhaps I need to do a live stream. Anyway, um, here we go. So I will see you all back for part five. This has been part four. Any questions, comments, stick them down below. Sorry, stick them down below. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Um, and hit the notifications bell, then you'll get notified of when I put other videos out. So... There we go. Um, lots and lots of people are joining in on the auction for the wing, wing Nut Wings um, Camel and LG, LG, LVG6, C6. So uh, that's definitely going to sell. So that's good. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I will see you all soon. Um, and we'll be back with something else. I don't quite know what yet, but... Uh, We'll be back with something else i really need to get back into that a20 but i'm all burned out on the photo etch in the end of carriage base it's um yeah anyway i need i need to pick up something else and just put it together we shall see get me mojo going on it what do you think guys right i'll see you all soon thank you for watching there's a final look how it all goes <laughs> lovely lovely jubbly right thanks for watching bye for now